you know what one guy said? Now, I, I understand where he's coming from. He said, I want to have Bobby, but I'm afraid to. I'm afraid he'll rock the boat. I said, come on and have me. I'm going to turn it over, see who wants back in. <laughs> we want to do way more than rock the boat. Let's turn it over, see who wants back in. Don't, don't. Listen. Well, anyway, here's what, here's what I'm here to talk to you about. Now, it's wonderful to talk about Pastor and, and uh, Sister Carol and all of this, but what about you? What are you doing for the kingdom of God? All of us have a place and a purpose. Ecclesiastes, say it, Ecclesiastes. Yes. Chapter 3, verse 1. It says there's a time and a season and a purpose. Now, talk fast, don't I? It says there's a time and a season and a purpose for every activity of God under heaven. That just simply says everything God wants to do He's cut out a time slot for it. What you and I need to do is find out his purpose for our lives. Ephesians 2.10. I studied Ephesians 2.10 out of every English translation of the Bible I could find. One of them said, you're his stroke of genius to display his God deeds. One translation said, you are the best God could do to display who he is. Ephesians 2.10 says, we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God before ordained, pre-planned, we'd conduct ourselves in them. What in the world does that mean? Well, it means that God created things for you to do before you were you. See, a lot of people go, I don't know. I don't know if I've got any purpose. You had purpose before you were formed. Psalm 130, what? Psalm 139, verse 16 says, All of our days, and I'm screaming, all of our days are written in his book before we've ever lived a single one of them. One day, son, you'll write music. Okay, one day he will write music. That'll be wonderful. All right. You say, what, you go, what am I going to do? Well, what do you want to do? God said, if a, if a man's ways please the Lord, God will give him the desires of his heart. If that's, that, see, we have not because we ask not. We're talking about getting the lids of limitation on. Well, you know, I don't want to expect too much. He says, ask of me and I'll give you the nations. God had the audacity to name himself El Shaddai. The God that's more than you'll ever have need of. Aren't you glad God's not up there going, oh, I never saw this coming. <laughs> He's author and finish, you're not author and oops. You ever started something? No. God's not that way. He's author and finisher. He's going to finish what he started. I love Philippians 1. Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident of this very thing, he that hath begun a good work in you will continue it until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, he started something good. He wants to rock this place. I'm talking about the Dallas Metroplex area. I'll tell you what. If people can fly all over the world to go to Disney World and uh, all that other stuff, they can start flying all over the world to come to River Glory. Listen, you let God break out like God wants to break out. It says, it was noise to broad that he was in the house. There was not room enough to receive him. No, not so much of, I'm screaming, not so much of it as about the door. And so remember that's when they had to tear the roof down? Isn't that something? I'm telling you, you let it be noise to brought Jesus is in the house. People are coming. It says in multitudes, that means a bunch. And multitudes believed on him when they saw the miracles he did. I, I had the privilege of talking to Billy Graham. My wife and I were on a plane coming out of uh, Bulgaria. Well, and then we ended up in Moscow. Dr. Graham was doing his big uh, Moscow sports stadium. And we're on a plane flying from uh, uh, Moscow down to Vienna, late night, one of those peanut flights. Dr. Graham was sitting there, no entourage, nobody carries luggage. He tried to carry my wife's luggage. But anyway, we're on the plane coming, and I, I'm standing in the aisle with Dr. Graham, and I said, Dr. Graham, God has shown me that he's going to use supernatural signs and wonders in the last days to win the harvest. He looked me deep in the eyes, and he put his hand right here on my shoulder and said, Son, I believe every word of that. Then he said, let me tell you something about harvest time. I was reared on a farm, and one thing I know about harvest time, it's short. We're going to have to get busy winning the harvest. Well, we can't just be spectators on the sideline. We've got to be participators on the front line. We've got to get really ready to do what God's called us to do. Do you have uh, little favorite characters in the Bible? I I've got some favorite characters and uh, that I, I don't talk out of much. One of my favorite characters in the Bible is Esther. Esther. 
She shows up at the darkest day of history for her generation. As far as, as, far as the plans of the enemy, they would assassinate, kill, eradicate every Jew on March of what? March the 16th, something like that. And here's little Esther in the kingdom for such a time as this. Oh, boy. Timing is everything. Acts 2.1. They were all in one, no, all in one place in one accord. What if they hadn't been in that place? How come them to be in that place? Because somebody heard what Jesus said, go carry in Jerusalem, be where you're supposed to be. Timing is everything. So Esther finds out, Esther 4.14, she is in the kingdom for such an opportunity as this. That's what it says. And you and I are in the kingdom for such an opportunity as this. Wow. This is, I'm telling you, people are looking for answers. All over the world, they're looking for answers. Guess who's supposed to have them? Me and you. Isaiah 50, verse 4. You read that one, didn't you? Isaiah 50, verse 4 says, I will give you the tongue of a taught one, and you'll know how to reply and respond to the people that ask you, how do we navigate these dark, dangerous days? I don't know about you. I want the tongue of a taught one, don't you? I want to operate in the anointing of the sons of Issachar. They had understanding of times to know what the people of God should be doing. That's us. We should know what's, what's taking place. The, the, the Lord said, these signs, he gives us signs to show us the timing. You believe that? It's harvest time. You believe that? See, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. All things become bright and brand new. That's what it says. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 20 says, now, that would be now, now are we ambassadors for Christ. What in the world is an ambassador? I'll tell you what it is. It's the Greek, Greek word the ambassador means a senior representative sent out with authority. A senior representative sent out with authority. I don't know about you. i got a couple of questions. Oh, how much authority do I have? Answer is the same amount as the one that sent me. Now who sent me? Jesus. How much authority does he have? Matthew 18. All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Isn't that something? You're some kind of an artist. Did you know it? An artist? Mm-hmm. I dare you start doodling something. If you'll start doodling on paper, it'll shock you what God will create, okay? That's true. Now watch out. That's true. You saw, you don't know, oh, yeah. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen. We have book tables, and sometimes I'll get people to make a little mark. And I'll draw something out of it. So some this kind of a uh, lady, this, well, this lady comes by. And she's very kind. You can tell they're just kind of, you know. And so I said to her, I said, hey, if you'll make a little squiggly mark, I'll draw you something out of it. She said, I, I beg your pardon? I said, if you'll just make a squiggly little mark on the cover of this book, I'll draw you something. She goes, okay. She just grabbed a thing and goes, and the moment she did that, what I saw her squiggle looked like a Chinese hat. So I drew a little Chinese person, little slant eyes, and, and just, look, just like a little Chinese person. And I said to her, one day you'll be a missionary in China. She looked at me like, you are an idiot. <laughs> and guess what happened? I'm off in another conference. In she comes. She had taken the little doodle thing to a regular artist and had her paint the, the portrait, and she came and had, had the papers from Dennis Bao from the leading uh, evangelist in China, and he had accepted her as a missionary into China. Come on. Now, is this crazy? Is this, see, God, that's what you've got to do. You've got purpose. You just need to connect with the purpose God has for you. He's got a plan for you. Guess what? There's 7.6 billion people, you know, give or take a few, on, on the planet right now, and not a single one like you. You are divinely unique in the clearest sense of the word. There will never be another you. God made only one of you, and he wants you to do what he created for you to do.